I believe it was yes. North Northamptonshire. Northamptonshire. Yeah. yeah, that's so that's a real place. And there is a couple who w- received a letter from their local council that they might need to sell their house um, to make room for illegal immigrants, which of course we're all calling migrants or asylum seekers. Now let's take a look down to the local council offices here and I spoke to a lady in there. She took photocopies of the letter after I showed her it and was really angry with her. And she said to me, it's nothing to worry about. It's just a standard letter. And I said, I don't think that's a standard letter that you should be sending to any person. Yeah, so describe the con- describe the contents of the letter for us because it is quite strongly worded, isn't it? And it suggests that your property is empty. And what do they suggest yeah. is it's going to be used for? They they say as part of this process, North Northampton Council is identifying empty properties and sites within the area, with the aim of encouraging owners to bring premises back into use or to find alternative options for derelict sites. The resettlement team in North Northamptonshire Council supports asylum seekers and refugees across three different projects, Homes for Ukraine, Afghan resettlement and asylum dispersal. At present, we are seeing a considerable increase in positive (laughs) immigration Uh. decisions being made in favour of asylum seekers. So basically, they're wanting accommodation. So, Lewis, what do you make of that? What do you make of the government deciding that, hey, maybe... uh, And it seems to be a misunderstanding that they thought the house was empty, but what do you make of the government Mm -hmm. deciding what the use of somebody's property should be going towards this and this is another example of the government just not taking people's claims seriously when it when it comes to this i think it's abhorrent that our not just our elderly not just our veterans on the street but british citizens in general that we're not putting our priorities first anymore and that we are completely selling out to um, people who don't share our values, who don't share our culture, and are prioritizing them um, over hardworking, taxpaying um, British citizens. And it, it makes me it makes me really angry, if I'm totally honest. Um, this has been a problem that's been going on for quite a while now, like decades and decades. But it's spiraling out of so much control. Take um, recently that the Church of England was helping facilitate um, asylum seekers over into the UK, especially uh, some churches in Canterbury, where asylum seekers will attend church and attend. I think one guy, there was one testimony of a priest that helped with an asylum application because he handed out leaflets one day with uh, a priest and this has been a problem that's been going on for so long it's not just in the in in the church of england that's helped facilitating it the home office is full of an activist class that tried to facilitate this for some strange reason want to facilitate this and people have had enough people don't people don't want this and this is this is hurting ordinary people in the UK. This is what people do not understand. I read a statistic as well earlier that um, uh, I think it was from a guy called Adam Brooks who posted it on onto Twitter, which um, which has been verified. I think it was twenty four billion pounds um, has been wasted by taxpayers' money to fund migrants who haven't even worked in the UK that have come over here and that have haven't worked haven't contributed to the gdp or even the economy at all and it's cost the taxpayer 24 billion pounds i'm not sure if that's per year i need to double check this tweet this is the tweet yeah uk taxpayer forked out almost 24 billion pounds on jobless migrants who contribute nothing to the economy since 2020 so that's four years right or three years if you want to be be specific coming up to four years 
So there is a problem. There is a huge problem in this country, and I'm sure it's the same for other countries. But the people now, I think the narrative is changing, but the government, both Labour and Conservative, aren't interested in doing anything about this. So what happens? Um, tensions are going to raise. People are going to take matters into their own hands. And it's not looking good, if I'm totally honest. That's all I'm going to say. But, yeah, we have a massive problem in this country, and I'm sure for, for other Western countries too. My approach to this was more a focus on a government not doing the best by its own citizens, which it's by design supposed to do. What they said was to adhere to refugee claims from Ukraine, Afghanistan, and asylum seekers, which are obviously people from countries abroad and in North Africa and the Middle East who've skipped over a whole bunch of other countries to get to England for its benefits. What's interesting and what I think the UK citizens, particularly in England here in Northamptonshire, should have a problem with is the fact that their government is not only saying, hey, we need properties of yours, to house people who are not from this country, but we're going to force you to sell your home, potentially force you to sell your property because we have determined what you are doing with your property is not worth it. One of the, the, the things that the letter said from the government was to bring the vacant properties into use again. So if you're not using it, we've decided that a better use for it is to house illegal immigrants or asylum seekers, whichever they technically fall under in each case. That is an outrageous thing to claim that the government has decided that what they want to use your property for is better, is more meaningful. And we've decided that you're not using your home in a way that's useful. So we're going to use it for you on, well, not on your behalf. You have to sell it to us. This is quite literally a form of communism to say this is what socialists yep. and communists, particularly in America, suggest as a solution to inequity is there are vacant properties, vacant government buildings and second and third homes owned by wealthier people that are going unused. So we should be able to seize them from them and do what we will with them, give them to homeless or in this case, refugees. It makes me question the theory or the use of the term imminent domain, which is often used in border places along the U.S.-Mexico border to say we have to take this over to build the wall, for example, it makes me question even the legitimacy of that. Should the government be able to take over your property and do whatever they want? Should they build around it, et cetera, et cetera? Even in a wartime, would you, would you put up a fight if the government said we need to build a defense on your property? I don't think so, but I don't also think that you would require the government to seize your property in order to do so. If you want to... If you want to be uh, invaded or something and you want to protect your own property, I think that should be your right. Now, the federal government's job is typically to defend its people. However... I have a very hard time justifying any government saying, hey, I know what's better for you than you do. And the reason is because, as we have seen over the past eight years now, the governments of the West, the the Sunaks, the Borises, the Bidens, and the Trudeaus, they are not the special people, nor are their underlings. They're not these particularly brilliant people. They're running massive deficits. They're sending money overseas constantly. They are poorly protecting its, the country's borders. These people are not special. So what makes them particularly adept at telling you or determining what a property is more useful for? I don't think they have any, any claim to have an expertise in this. So in terms of saying you have to sell your house or we need your property to do X, Y, or Z for defense reasons, I can't justify that to myself because it's my house. If I've worked hard enough to get a second house in North Northamptonshire, then I shall do with said property whatever I wish. And if it shall remain empty, I will continue to pay property taxes on it anyways. That's where the government's involvement is supposed to stop. I pay these taxes to keep you off my back, but apparently what they want to do is say, hey, we can force you to sell it to us. It's like a gun buyback where they say, you know, we're not just taking it from you. We're compensating you for what we're taking from you, even though it actually, the money comes from the people. So it's not really like this money's coming from nowhere. We're just going to charge other people to buy your property from you. It doesn't make any sense. I agree. I agree. I, I don't think I've got much to add. I think my 
my views are very clear on this. And the only way in order to sort this mess out is deportations. And I know it sounds harsh, but it but that's the only way. What else are you going to do? It's it's the it's the only way. Well, um, for illegals. If you watch one of these. Um... And in my house, there's been a lot of UK border patrol watching in the last couple months. The way people sneak in is absolutely insane. Underneath trucks, um, hidden in the yep. back of uh, grocery fridge tr uh, trailers. You know, uh, one was lettuce, and they have to detect people by carbon monoxide readings because you can tell someone's been bre breathing in there. And it's a constant thing in um, what's the what's the crossing between France and England uh, in Calais. It's a constant Calais. thing all through the night. People are trying to sneak them in through the country. Of course, it's nowhere near America, but this is a constant thing where people are traveling all across Europe and in some cases through northern Africa and the Middle East, like I said, just to get to Germany, Sweden and England and France as well. Mm. Not because, you know it's it's easiest to get there it's because they know they're going to get certain privileges and in some cases they're going to get a brand new house i guess in canada you get if you're a refugee claim and which we've seen those sort of things skyrocket over the last couple of years you get an income you get a house you get top tier health care better than the standard you get everything so why when the, these people are making treacherous journeys across the globe to get these free things. And it's not because they face imminent death in most cases. The tough part is making the trip, not actually settling or, you know, leaving their country. I do believe now I wasn't, I was skeptical about it at first, but I do believe now the only answer really is that it's being done by design, that this is done purposefully um, for what, particular reason i couldn't say but the evidence is mounting quite clearly the home office isn't interested or the uk home of home, home office is not interested in sorting out this problem because there is an activist class i i try and describe obviously you've got different classes uh lower working middle high but there is another and it's an activist class and these people are in all sorts of institutions, governmental or, you know, others. And this is their this is their moment, these activist class, to implement whatever they want. I, I don't think that the Prime Minister I think there might be a handful of ministers within the government, but I don't think it's the Prime Minister that truly does run our country. And that's not that's not conspiracy theory at all. It's backed up by um, how the public service works in this country and how that there is within um, the public service a class of people that looks to thwart policy who, who if they don't like whoever's running, whether it be Home Secretary or, or whoever, if they don't like them and if they don't want them to continue with their policies, uh, they, can, they can get them out, which they've seen with... Suella Braverman, for example, who she was removed after talking about two-tier policing within London and saying that particular groups of people were being um, were being favoured. I say favoured. It's more excused. They were treating them differently. They were treating them differently uh, towards other groups of people, and she pointed that out and said this is wrong, and she was outed from that. And there were people, there was actually reports um, saying that the Home Office, the people that were there, were almost relieved and, and expressed their relief that she went. So quite clearly, it's been taken over by activists. Um, so I think that's who's, who's, who runs the country. Personally, it's the, it's the public services uh, in terms of like the Home Office and all these cats. And... <laughs> they are not looking to get this problem solved. They don't want this problem solved um, because they agree with these far left open border policies. And it's just, it's as simple as that. And we're not going to get a resolution for a long time unless we gut it, unless we literally do a Trump and drain the swamp uh, and enact some, some policies that restrict 
um, people within public services like that <clears throat> or governmental services as well to um, to be impartial to, when it comes to policy, to serve and help the person who has been elected by the people to be in that position.